Should you foster a shelter pet? Let's start by clearing up any confusion about the answer to this question because it's yes. And if that turns you off, know that I'm not biased. I'm just right. Reasons to foster. Besides the fact that 2.7 million animals are euthanized in the US every year and you have the power to do something about it. Reason number one, it's fun. Need a hiking buddy, a cuddle buddy, a Netflix buddy, a friend that likes you? Another reason to flood social media with pictures? A companion for your dog? A cure for the all-consuming loneliness you feel waking up every morning? I mean, or you could adopt. No one's gonna be mad at you if you adopt. Reason number two, it's rewarding. Wouldn't it be cool if you could actually save a life? Oh my gosh, you can, and it's easy. Get a foster. No animal is more grateful than one you've pulled from a kennel. He's snoring. Reason number three, animals are infinitely more adoptable in and after foster care. And I'm gonna read this one because my memory is. Living in even the best shelter sucks, and after a while, an animal's behavior will often reflect that. Neither staff nor volunteers are capable of giving the hundreds of animals in their care the love or enrichment that one foster could give one dog or cat, or bunny or tortoise, or whatever. Even taking a dog out for one night in your home significantly reduces their stress levels and makes them more adoptable upon return to the shelter. Reason number four, fostering creates space for more homeless animals. Shelter staff and volunteers see fosters as angels sent from heaven for a multitude of reasons, but especially this one. So if you get off from the approval and appreciation of other people, look no further than your local shelter's front door. Many shelters in the U.S. still euthanize for space, so taking one dog or cat away from that equation can save multiple lives. Reason number five, many shelter animals get sick and can only recover in a home. Obviously. Reason number six, even an overnight foster is extremely beneficial for animals both mentally, emotionally, behaviorally, etc. It's like a weekend away to recharge. Reason number seven, there is no high like finding your foster the perfect family. Now that you're convinced fostering is the best use of your time in the whole world, let's address some of your nagging doubts. <laughs> Excuses! <coughs> Excuse number one, but I don't have enough time for a pet. But you do have enough time for a foster. Any amount of time outside of the shelter is beneficial for an animal, and many shelters across the U.S. are adopting day trip, lunch trip, overnight, short-term fostering programs. Even 30 minutes outside of a kennel is A-plus enrichment for a dog. My house is too small. Bet it's not smaller than a kennel. I'm gone eight-plus hours every day. Sounds like you need a senior dog or a cat, and your local foster coordinator would be ecstatic to hook you up with one of them. I don't even like animals. First of all, that's not true. Second of all, I don't like people, but I still give to UNICEF. But I'm poor. That's fine. Your shelter will probably provide everything you need for your new foster. But I'll get too attached to the puppy. While this is an excuse that I completely understand, I still believe that fostering is worth it because maybe you won't. I promise no one will be upset if you adopt a shelter animal. Three, guess what sucks more than saying goodbye to your foster? Knowing you could have saved a dog from euthanasia but didn't. I mean, but the shelter is full of pit bulls. So foster a pit bull, silly! Breed restrictions, though? You don't have to foster a pit bull. They are wonderful dogs, but you don't have to. If you would like to, there are ways around that. I would start with maybe your local shelter's pet retention department or Google. But you didn't hear that here. and spay and neuter your pets. You're an adult probably, you should know better. But if you don't, congratulations on your contribution to a worldwide epidemic. 